Previous Battlefield titles have often borrowed from different parts of the game to bolster the multiplayer experience. Maps, weapons and vehicles are transformed from the single player into pieces of content for a multiplayer that will long outlive the single player segment of the game. Now I see no reason that can't happen in Battlefield 5, and ever since I got the chance to play the Tireur War Story a few months back at an EA event, I can't shift the feeling that that setting that DICE chose for that war story should at some point become a multiplayer experience in Battlefield 5. The Tireur War Story depicts a segment of Operation Dragoon, which was an Allied invasion of southern France in 1944 and was a sister operation to Operation Overlord, which you might know as the Normandy landings. A vastly different landscape is present in the south compared to the north, and thus that brings me to the first reason for wanting this setting in Battlefield 5's multiplayer. It is absolutely beautiful. The colour palette of oranges, reds and yellows is really unlike anything we currently have when it comes to multiplayer maps. And as much as I know the look of a map is always secondary or should be to the level design, it's hard not to like what DICE has created here. We have multiple stages to the location, of course it's not just one map for the entire war story, things change along the way. We have the initial push into the woods, then out across the Dragon's Teeth fortification and up to the German stronghold. Then we have the linear forest area, arguably similar to Argon Forest from Battlefield 1, but even more linear. And of course there you have to destroy different pieces of artillery. And finally, the push up to the Chateau. Again, this is quite a linear section, but it might suit certain game modes like Breakthrough, front lines with different HQ locations, or even the Rush game mode, should DICE choose to keep that as a permanent game mode, rather than the limited time mode we currently know it to be in Chapter 2 of the Tides of War. Now, this location doesn't offer much space for ground vehicle combat. The war story element focuses on the massive infantry push through this area, but there are times where ground vehicles will come into play, and the aerial assaults from German Stuka dive bombers can be seen in the war story as well, so we've got some aerial combat going on. The big dragon's teeth structure across the centre of that very first stage of the war story I think would offer a really unique gameplay setting in multiplayer. Imagine the structure being fully intact at the start of a round, teams starting on either side. As the round progresses, different teeth are destroyed by explosives, tank shells shattering them, or a massive bombing run from above, and suddenly the small amount of ground vehicles could cross over the map, whereas before they'd been halted by this massive concrete barrier. That could be a really cool gameplay moment right there. As we already know from other maps in the game, infantry can weave around these concrete posts. The Dragon's Teeth formation is actually present on the Hamada map as well. Plus, these are fortifiable concrete posts, so they can be rebuilt if they get destroyed. It's just such a unique looking setting, I think it would be a shame not to bring this into the multiplayer at some point. Having said that though, if this map were to come to the multiplayer section of Battlefield 5, it likely wouldn't be until the later stages of the Tides of War live service. As I mentioned earlier, Operation Dragoon took place in 1944 and successfully pushed the Germans out of southern France, forcing them to retreat all the way back to the German border. This was a significant part of World War II. It signalled the start of Allied dominance in mainland Europe for well over three years and started the pushback towards Berlin, the final stages of World War II. DICE has said that the tides of war will tell the story of World War II. It will be somewhat accelerated, but it will be from start to finish. And we can see evidence of that in the first chapter called Overture. This is launching on December the 4th, and of course it's coming with the Panzerstorm map. This takes place in Belgium in 1940, and it sees the German Blitzkrieg taking over land and pushing back the other way across mainland Europe. So a map set in 1944, four years later, wouldn't make an appearance until the later stages of the Tides of War, likely into that second year of support for Battlefield 5. It's been rumoured that DICE is supporting this game for two years with a live service. 
A map like this isn't directly part of the race to Berlin, however, so it could possibly launch before that segment of the live service. We already know the Americans will be joining the ranks in Battlefield 5 in the future. This image here, this key art picture, pretty much confirms American soldiers coming to the game and some American weaponry as well. That was a very significant period in World War II. It'd be right then to presume that Allied landings back onto mainland Europe would also feature in the tides of war, along with battles in the Pacific between the Japanese and the Americans. Of course, this is all speculation at this point. Right now, we only know what's coming up until and including March of 2019, but DICE has committed to updating the roadmap frequently so players know what's about to launch, what is just round the corner, and what's coming a little bit further into the future. And speaking of what is just round the corner, this week actually, we're going to be finding out more about the first chapter of the Tides of War called Overture. A landing page is going to go live on the Battlefield website tomorrow, November the 27th, and we're going to be getting an article including a sneak peek at the patch notes for the update coming on December the 4th. That's going to be posted tomorrow as well. In that sneak peek at the patch notes, DICE is going to be releasing some more detail about the rumoured TTK and TTD changes. Details on bombers and how they're going to be rebalanced, an update to how the conquest catch-up mechanic works and what the devs are doing to reduce its impact, and even more besides that. Plenty of bug fixes, I'd wait are going to be in this patch too. Of course, we know Frontlines will be returned to its Battlefield 1 design in the December update, and the physical bombs in the airborne game mode, they will lose their 3D HUD icons for most of the time, massively reducing the bomb carrier's visibility, which at the moment is a giant crutch for the defending team. In general, we have a really good idea where DICE is headed with their first major patch for Battlefield 5. The only thing we're missing is detail on TTK and TTD changes. We've not had any solid information to say if this balance is going to swing one way or the other, but I do have to say that the response to my video on Saturday, the one where I talked about the potential increase in the TTK, was just absolutely insane. So many of you expressed your thoughts down in the comments section and on social media after the video went live, and it was great to see a conversation starting based on something that is clearly very, very important to a lot of players of this game. I still believe increasing the TTK will result in a worse gameplay experience, and I think roughly, and this is just an estimation, about 80 to 85% of people who replied to that video agreed with what I had to say. The TTK should remain the same as it is right now, and I should focus on fixing the TTD, the time to death, before looking to tweak weapon damage and balance. Battlefield 5's gunplay is arguably the best implementation in a Battlefield game since Battlefield 3. Sure, it's got some rough edges and there are some weapons that do need some tweaks, but not the entire system needs tweaking. We don't need a drastic change here. I think the TTK is absolutely fine the way it is, and people seem to be really enjoying the game with it the way that it is. All in all, we've got a really big week ahead of us for Battlefield 5. We're just a week away from the first major update to the game, a week away from a lot of new content arriving in the form of a single player war story, a multiplayer map, and maybe a co-op practice range mode. So here's to hoping tomorrow, when DICE release that extra information, that it makes for good reading. So, there we are then. I think the Tirayua War Story should be transformed into a multiplayer location for Battlefield 5. How would you feel about that? How would you like to see this appear at some point as part of the Tides of War? Or perhaps there's another element of the single player that you'd like to see over in the multiplayer? I have seen some players talking about the Under No Flag War Story and some of the maps over there being transformed into multiplayer maps because they really like those as well. I've played through the Under No Flag War Story a couple of times now and I have to say there are some good maps there too. Let me know down in the comments what you're thinking here. Once DICE release their articles tomorrow on that Overture chapter of the Tides of War, I'll be bringing you a video with all of the information so you know what's going to be included in that December the 4th update. But thank you very much for watching today, and until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.